Hey, Ray Higdon here, and this is a very special video. I was speaking in Dallas at an event, a business event, and I was asked to give the optional non-denominational worship service, and they happened to capture it on camera. And so that is this video. I hope that it helps you and moves you. I got a lot of great feedback from it, and I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Let's bring up Ray Higdon, our brother in Christ, who's going to lead the service today for all of you. Ray morning. morning. Thanks for being here. So I want to start with uh, a parable. And it's the parable of the, of the lost son. Luke 15, 11 through 32. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son had got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to be a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never even gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Now, I had heard that several times and I've read that several times. You know, I, um, I've been <clears throat> very compelled to read Scripture, to read the Word of God. I now struggle to read any other book. <laughs> so I have to force myself to read other books. I love reading the Word of God, and that's Holy, that's Holy Spirit. I'm very grateful. But I'd read that several times, but there's something I, I didn't notice. There's something very, very powerful in that that you may not catch. I didn't catch the several times that, that I read it. <clears throat> So I'm going to read this part again. Luke 15, 18 to 20. This is the son. He says, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and ran to him and kissed him. He didn't actually say that. 
His father ran before he said it to him. He planned to say it. He had, a, he had an idea, right? This is what I'll say to him. So he makes this plan, and he turns to his father, and his father ran to him. That's how God will respond to you. You, you don't have to have everything perfect. You don't have to fix everything in your life, then turn to him. You just have to turn to him, and he will run to you. So, I'll share my, my testimony. <clears throat> so, three years ago, I, I had accomplished all the different things that I thought I wanted. You know, I spoke on Russell Brunson's stage and Grant Cardone's stage, and you know, the company just broke every record we'd ever had, and everything's just rocking and rolling, man. It's awesome. That was the end of, end of 2019. But something inside me was like, something's missing. And I talked a little bit about that Belize trip, and there were some other things that were just showing up, and I'm like, why do I still, why, why do I still hold on to that? Why am I still suspicious of people? Why do I constantly have this feeling that I'm, I'm not important. And so I started digging. I started doing the hard stuff. I started digging. I, and I learned. <laughs> I uncovered the majority of things that I had in my life. For example, my entire life, every relationship I ever had, including my wife at the time of, you know, 10 years back then, 12 years this year, I thought I wasn't important. And so when we would get into an argument, I would at some point, it would, it would just switch to my stronghold and say, well, you're not important, so you, know, you don't need to say anything. So I would just shut up, because if you're not important, why, why continue talking? The reason that I thought I wasn't important is from childhood. Family members knew that I was being abused. No one did anything about it. So what, what other conclusion could I draw? It wasn't important. That's just the deal. And so I start this journey, and I, I try all these different you know, therapies, and I hire different hypnotists, and I do all, and I'm not bashing any of that stuff, by the way, because all of that stuff was helpful. I don't know that there was one thing that wasn't helpful. Um, learned all about you know, stored emotions and, and all these different things, and, you know, Jenny was very helpful with that. Got into meditation, and, and I, those that know me know I'm an all-in kind of guy. <laughs> a little crazy, right? I was, he, he, God built me this way. It's just the way it is. So I get into meditation, so pretty soon I'm doing three-hour meditations, four-hour meditations. I tame my body. I tame my mind. I, you know, it's just crazy, completely changed. People meet me and they're like, you're different, man. <laughs> like, like, they, like, you're like, what have you been doing? Like, I'm just different. I calmed, I, like, I, I got so much help from all these different things, but there's still something missing. And so I, my wife, who's amazing, and uh, I miss her greatly, and um, so she's hired to go speak in Nashville. And some of you know Kimberly Olson. How many know Kimberly? Okay. Three of you, perfect. And uh, <clears throat> so Kimberly hires Jess. Jess goes up there and speaks. And uh, Jess comes home, and I, and I think this is the first time she's ever said this to me, but she said, hey, I met someone I think you should talk to. And I'm like, hmm, okay. And so I get on with this guy she met at the event, and you know we go on Zoom, and first words out of his mouth, he looks at me and goes, I see a big vision for you and God. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Where do I swipe, right? Like, what, what are we selling today? And, uh, but, I, but I listen, I listen for, you know, we're on there for like 90 minutes, and none of it made any sense, but it felt true. And I didn't understand, because I didn't grow up in the church. Like I said yesterday, I didn't know one verse, period. I didn't know anything. And, I mean, there was a period of time as a teenager after, um, just being called to tell this, uh, after I sat in a bathtub and I plugged in a toaster and I pushed the button down and I threw it into the bathtub 
and nothing happened. I went to church for a few months. I, I don't think that was a cry for help because I'm not an engineer, but I thought that would work. Right? And it didn't. And I thought maybe there's a reason. But that's the only exposure. I'd had a couple months in the church. <clears throat> so everything he said made no sense at all. But it just, like, it just felt true. It felt like, man, I feel like there's something here. The next day, we go to a networking meeting, Jess and I, and, uh, and I run into this guy who I know I'd met before, but I, I didn't know his name, you know, didn't know what he did, but I, I know I'd met him before. I just didn't remember anything about him. And, uh, and he sees me and goes, I see a big vision for you and God. I'm like, what is going on? This guy is in Naples. The other guy's in Miami. They don't know each other. Like, this is very strange. In the middle of the networking meeting, and he's a big old dude. He used to be a corrections officer, but he's a pastor. Um, he prays over me. <laughs> and in the middle of this networking meeting, people are walking this way, that way, this way, that way. <clears throat> I start bawling down crying. I don't know why. I don't know what's happening. <clears throat> no one notices. I mean, it's like, I mean, he's six three, six, four, big, big dude, right? I know not as big as Colt, and where's Colt? No, anyway. But uh, big old dude praying over me, middle of the network of me. I literally, like, I, I kind of open my eyes while I'm crying. I see people walking this way, this way, this No one notices. No one says a word, right? Like God put a little shield over us or something, right? And then uh, something weird happened. And, and I, know, I know that there's a, a parent in the room that this will help, because um, I, I don't always share this part, but I, I just know that this will help somebody. Some will think it's weird, some it'll help. So fast forward a little bit, and that original guy and another guy comes over, and we get baptized, right? And I don't, I don't feel anything, but the next morning I, I wake up and I'm just like, I'm different. Like, you do, you do one to three hours a day of meditation, you get to know your body. I'm like looking at the sunrise differently. I'm looking at flowers. I'm like, I'm different. Something's different. But one thing that was on the weird side uh, was about our son. So our, our three-year-old son, Graham, for as long as we remember, um, he would cough at night. Bad. Wouldn't cough during the day. No symptoms, no nothing. He would just cough at night like crazy. And, um, and it, we tried everything. We tried all kinds of medicine. We tried, you know, diffusers. We tried all kinds of, you know, things. Nothing really helped. It was just like heartbreaking. He would just cough literally all night long. And so um, when those guys were over and, you know, they blessed our house, they anointed our house, which I didn't know what that meant, um, I go to put Graham down for bed that night, and, and I go... And, uh, and he goes, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, no son. I'm like, well, you know, it's night. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do you mean? And he's looking around the room. And he says, no son. And it kind of takes me a second. I'm like, do you normally see something in here? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, you don't see anything in here right now? He goes, no. Hmm, okay. And so don't know what to do with that. I leave. He didn't cough for two weeks. Now, he had coughed every night as long as we remember. Since then, I've learned that there's a thing, right? There's spiritual warfare. One day, he comes into our bedroom at 4 a.m. He flicks on the lights. He grabs my Bible and says, leave me alone. And we're just there in bed, and we're like, ha, 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 right? Don't know how to do, don't know what to do with that. But that next day, right, that next day, I just had the overwhelming feeling that I just needed to trust God. Didn't know what that meant, didn't know how to pray, wasn't trained in any of this stuff. And I just got down and I gave and I said, Lord, I, I give you, I give you my life. I turn my life over to you, Christ. And I don't know what that looks like. And I, I literally, I literally said this. I said, if you want me to shut the business down, I'll shut it down. You want me to go on the road with a robe, I'll do it. <laughs> Remember, I'm an all-in kind of guy. <laughs> and, and I'm ready, man. I'm, you know, do this, guide me. And, and I got 
you need to go live. And that's, you know, that's when I went live and it's called my apology, you know, to God. And ever since then, I've just been on this, this incredible journey that has given me more purpose than ever before. It's made me, it's, it's just, it's just totally transformed me of, of knowing that all these years and, you know, I, I was, even though from the outside, maybe I looked, you know, like things were rocking and rolling and good to go, I was very broken. I was, I was seeking acceptance. I was seeking, I was, I looked at, you know, how much money is the, is the business making? How many people are we in front of? Because I, I would mix both impact and income. And though, if, if those two things aren't happening, then I'm, I'm not doing a good job. I'm terrible. I need to work harder. What's wrong? And so I was trying to fill holes that can only be filled with God. And I realize that now. And that's, that, that's maybe difficult to wrap your mind around, but there are just, there are so many things that I was trying to make me feel better, make me feel something different. And it just never worked. It just never worked. A lot of things helped, but nothing worked, nothing fixed until I found God and started on this journey. And, you know, I, uh, I've had, you know, there's been so many lessons. It never, it literally never stops. And so I got a little bit more to, to share with you here. One realization that I had is network marketing is actually pretty similar to Christianity. Right? We know it's good. It's a good thing. So why don't they get it? What's wrong with you? <laughs> this will help you. And so we, you know, we become overzealous, right? We tell them, you know, what do you, what's wrong with you, right? We, we, you know, we try to, we try to go from where we are, not where they are. So we try to convince, we try to push, we try to, you know, judge, shame, make fun of, right? So I always hated that acronym, J-O-B, just over broke. It's not very helpful, right? That's not very calling to, hmm, I wonder what they're doing, <laughs> right? But that's, that's judgment in, in Christianity. We're not called to judge. And I know some people have really poured over the Scripture to try to locate where can we judge, right? But that's not what we're called to do. One of my favorite verses and this is one I, I have to remind myself of often because, you know, hey, I still, I still struggle every day. Ephesians 4.29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Isn't that powerful? What a clear instruction. It doesn't say, whap them upside the head with your Bible if they're sinning. It doesn't say that. It doesn't, tell them, it doesn't say, tell them that their denomination sucks. It doesn't say that there. I, I looked for it. It doesn't say that. I had to look up what non-denominational meant. I'm like, oh man, am I have to go, go back to using universe and stuff? Like, what are we doing here, right? And, and I'll tell you, I just want to address that. Um, I, I used to do that. I used to say, you know, God or the universe or whatever, right? Mother Nature, right? Whatever, right? And the problem is that's, that it's, it's hard to see when you're away, when, you're, when, you, when you don't understand um, sonship and daughtership. Is it's hard to imagine a relationship with universe, with cosmo, with stars and things like that. You miss the benefit of actually having a loving father who strengthens you, who, because he's right by my, by my hand, I will not be shaken, because he's with me at all times. That's why I now, I can walk into any room, I know he's with me, I'm never alone. I'm never alone no matter where I go. My father's always with me. That's something very difficult, that's very difficult to manufacture if you're using those, those words interchangeably. And so when you have things 
in your life that you don't know what to do, stop, stop bearing the burden yourself. And this is, this is our nature. Our nature is to be our own savior for us, for us to earn it, especially those in this room. And I, and I was the same way. A pastor helped me out with this understanding that, hey, bro, it's not by your works because we all fall short. It's by grace. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll help you. My pastor uh, mentors me, and uh, he gives a, a great description of grace because I didn't know the difference, right? Who, who will admit they don't know the difference between mercy and grace? Okay, some of, some of you do. That's great. So... Here's the difference. So let's say you're, you're, you go 50 miles an hour down a 25 mile an hour zone, cop pulls you over, gives you a ticket. That's justice. Okay. Same scenario. He gives you a warning. That's mercy. If he gives you a hundred dollar bill, that's grace. You didn't deserve it. Right. God gave his son when we didn't love him. It's not that, you know what, these guys love me so much, I'm going to go send my son. That's not what happened. We are saved through grace, not by our works. And that was a very difficult thing for me to embrace because I was so used to trying to earn everything in my life. And so get him in your corner. And I want to give you a real example, and I have many of these now. So both... I don't like, I don't, I, she tells her story. I don't, I don't share her thoughts on her, on her story, but both Jess and I got baptized same, you know, same day. And, uh, <clears throat> we start our journey, Mr. All in, <laughs> right? So, you know, Mr. All in, and she's, eh, she's getting there, right? She's studying a little bit here and there. And one day, one night we're at, we're at dinner and, you know, she's saying some things that the old me would have agreed with but i but i know i know it's not biblical right we're not to lean on our own understanding okay but i also know just husband wisdom i'm not going to correct her <laughs> i'm not going to say here's where you're wrong uh, colossians whatever right not going to do it and uh but i don't know what to do so i go home that night and I pray to God, and I say, God, I don't know what to do here, but I, I, I turn this over to you. I turn this situation over to you. You, you can perform miracles. I, I turn it over to you. And, and if there's something I, I can say, please give me wisdom. Thank you for wisdom, right? James 1.5, when ye lack wisdom, pray, and he'll give to you liberally and without reproach. So you literally can ask as many times as you want, right? It's great. It's not like the three wishes on the genie. Um, and so I turn, turn it over to him. And so that Sunday, we decide, out of the blue, go to a different church. And we've been going to a, one church. It was okay. You know, whatever, right? Uh, checking a box. We go to this church, and I'm like, whoa, it was incredible. And so, we're, you know, we're standing up. We're listening to the pastor, and I just, and he's just killing it. I mean, he's just amazing. And, and I, I just feel her heart open up. And I just, I don't want to look at her, right? I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> Not, jinx it. That's what I was thinking. I, mean, I don't want to jinx it. Like that, that would, oh, oh, I'm so turned off, right? So I'm over there crying. I don't want to look at her, right? And so we, we walk out of the sermon, and I see a women's Bible study, and there's a line of, of women signing up for it. And I thought, didn't say, I thought, man, that'd be so cool if she's signed up for that. And, and I'm already in, I think, two Bible studies at that point and two mentors and I, you know, whatever. And, and so I saw it. I'm like, man, it'd be cool if she signed up. And I, you know, I don't say it. She gets in line, which I'm like, yay, super cool. But then she turns, she runs face to face, smack face to face with one of her closest friends from high school. She's only seen one time since high school. That close friend has been going there since she was five years old, brings us to a post-sermon group of amazing people, and totally alters her path. Now, I couldn't have orchestrated that. I couldn't say, hey, be there at 1130, bump into her, right? Like, I, I couldn't have done that. 
I couldn't, I couldn't have like, hey, here's a hundo. Like, I don't even know her. I wouldn't even know to bribe her. I wouldn't even know how to, I can't orchestrate that stuff. And, and that's, what I've, that's what I've seen over and over and over and over is things just work out miraculously in ways I never could have orchestrated when I lean on him. So you have access to that. You have that ability to, to lean on him and stop making it all about your efforts and all about your endurance and, and, and everything that, that you're doing. And we're instructed in this, Philippians 4.8. I can't read right now. My eyes are all messed up. Or 4.6 maybe. <laughs> Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Now, there's a lot of, of New Age concepts that came you know, from the Bible, right? Mark eleven twenty four. 24, when ye pray, pray as if you've already received. Well, how do you pray as if you've already received? That's use your imagination. That's for you to see it as, as already happening. What does it mean to, uh, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, right? That's have gratitude. When do you have gratitude? You have gratitude when something's done, Right? <clears throat> and so here's the difference, okay? So when you present, when you, when you lean on what is it that you're looking for, right? Lean on Him, not a resource. So a lot of people, they, they, they pray, they wish for more money. That is a resource, right? Nothing wrong with it. If it's a resource, it's not the source, as long as you're like, like I used to be, and you're looking at your identity, your status, your significance, your self-worth, your, all of that as that's whatever I got in the bank account, then you will never have enough because there is no amount. And there, I, I've met people, I've coached people that you know, make millions and millions and millions of dollars a month. I've coached, I, I just coached a guy, he's raised $300 million for, for real estate. And a lot of these guys constantly are scared of losing it because it will never be enough there is no dollar amount if that is your significance if that's your identity if that's your status so this is not a bashing of wanting more money right the lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant there's nothing wrong with that but how do you view it how is it in your heart so leaning on him instead of the source versus the resource. And I want to acknowledge, you know, just a couple things. Um, you may have been church hurt. One of the saddest quotes out there is from Gandhi, and he says, I love your Christ, but I don't like your Christians because your Christians are so unlike your Christ. The reason he said that is one instance in Calcutta. He goes to a church, and he, th he had studied, and he's like, you know what? This seems pretty good. Not bad. I'm going to go check it out. Paraphrasing. And goes, <laughs> probably not how he talked at all, but uh, he goes to the church, and because he wasn't of a certain class, they called it caste, because he wasn't of a certain class, I said, no, no, get out of here. Wouldn't let him in the church. So he drew every conclusion about Christianity from that one experience. But so do other people. You may have been church hurt. You may, you know, you may have been lied to. You may have been shamed. You may, they, maybe they stole your money. You know, maybe they abused you in some way. That wasn't God. That wasn't God. So don't judge one example or maybe a few examples because, you know, God loves you. God didn't hurt you. <clears throat> and that may be tough to embrace because maybe you're hurt by your biological father. Many of us were. And what I learned is however you view your biological father is often how you view your heavenly father. So I realized this. I realized that I saw God as mean, uncaring. I saw that I, me on my side, not important, right? Who am I? Not worthy, not important. He's uncaring and mean. Like, this is a terrible relationship. So I projected my father 
my biological father and how I felt about him onto God, which is not accurate. It's not accurate. <clears throat> I will tell you, you know, when it comes to, you know, I shared, um, I've been in, you know, several situations where I share a little bit about my childhood of, you know, growing up um, very abused up until the age of 12. And, and believe me, I've heard some of your stories. Some of your stories are way worse. Um, I remember, I forget what age this was, but um, I was sick one morning and threw up into my oatmeal that I hated. I hated that oatmeal anyway. Um, but I threw up into the oatmeal, and when, um, when I wouldn't eat it, I was stabbed in the chest with a fork. Some bad times. Every, literally every morning, I was thrown against a closet and stomped. Every morning. That was my wake up. Until I was probably late 30s, I slept in a ball. Because if I, sl if I slept in a ball as a kid, it would give me time to brace myself before she got my ankles. That's how it was. And when I share that, you know, a lot of people will say, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. And honestly, and you know, it's one of the greatest gifts that was ever, ever given to me. Why? Because the fruit of that gift. The fruit of that gift has allowed me to speak to foster kids, kids in foster care, has allowed me to speak to troubled teenagers, has allowed, to talk, you know, allowed me to talk to people who have attempted suicide or are deeply depressed. You know, a few months ago, I was um, going <clears throat> to a, a lunch that they hold, they do this once a year, and they uh, have this lunch where they bring all these uh, troubled teenagers in give them lunch, give them a neat experience. And I asked the lady, because I wanted to start working with her, and I said, uh, hey, can I go, can I speak to him? And there was, <laughs> there was two tables, and she goes, well, yeah, if you want to speak, uh, don't speak to that table, go speak to that table. I'm like, oh, well, I'm going over here. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I walk up, and, and she's like, hey, guy, and she's even nervous for me. And... Uh, and she's like, oh, hey, you know, today we have uh, Ray Higdon, he's going to speak to you. And they're like, you know, who's this white boy, right? And they're just looking me up and down like, right? So I'm like, pff, 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 right? Two or three stories in, they're like, oh, oh, okay. He's one of us. Oh, okay. He gets us. I, see, I wouldn't trade that for the world. But I can't manufacture that. I can't just, I, I, I feel you. My friend, I, I, can't, I can't manufacture that. It's because I went through that, I was perfected in that. It helped me to understand and connect and relate. Does that make sense? And we're taught this. This is biblical as well. Man, my eyes are really messed up right now. <laughs> okay. So James 1, 2 through 5. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And then if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So all of those things that didn't make sense, why did I go through that? Why did this happen to me? That was actually perfecting your journey. You overcame it. You can now help others with that same thing that you overcame. And they will listen to you because you overcame it. They identify with you. You know, many years ago, I came, you know, I somehow came up with the verse, you know, or the, you know, mantra, help the person you used to be. <laughs> this, is, this is perfect. Now, here's the great, I think the greatest understatement in the Bible, Hebrews 12:11. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful, right? I think that's an understatement. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So whatever you have gone through, you are now equipped to help others go through that same thing. And in, and in doing so, 
You're going to bring hope to people that otherwise wouldn't have it. They just wouldn't have it. <clears throat> okay. And here's a biblical version of that. 2 Corinthians 1, 3-4. through 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Now, comfort, the Greek word, right? New Testament, Greek translation. The Greek word for comfort is paraklesis, which means to come alongside and help. To come alongside and help. So is it possible that God came alongside and helped you in some area of your life? Is it possible he helped you escape or survive something? Maybe he helped you get out of a situation that led you to something better. Maybe that situation you'd never wish on yourself or anybody else. But that was an equipping. <clears throat> and so, I'm just, I'm just so grateful for this journey. And I'm so grateful for you being here. I know there's other things you could be doing, right? Sleeping, one of them, right? And I just really appreciate you, you being here. And... I remember my, <laughs> I remember day one, day one of this journey, right, six and a half months ago. I do my apology to God, and I do my video. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm crying. I'm a mess, right? I just don't know what I'm doing. And I get all these messages of people like, oh my God, I've been praying for you for years. I've been woken up in the middle of the night to pray for you. Like I get literally thousands of messages. I get big, long audio messages, and people sharing their, their amazing stories and, and everything. And, um, and one guy that I, I really respected, he's a leader in this industry, he uh, calls me and he says, hey, I appreciate what you're doing, but uh, how do you know you're going to go to heaven? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> like uh, I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, I'm going to try to like be obedient and stuff. Like, that's what I said back then, because I, I literally didn't know. This was day one. And so I'm like, I, I don't know, man, I'm trying to beat in. I'll, I'll, I'll learn some stuff, right? Like, like just like think about that sun, right? I was, I was climbing out of all the things that I had been through, right? And I'm just like, all right, I'm going to do that. I was coming up with a plan, but I didn't, I didn't have the plan. I didn't know exactly what to do. And, um, <laughs> and he's like, how do you know you're going to go to heaven? I'm like, I'm going to be obedient. And he's like, well, that's not what the Bible says. I'm like, Okay, and if you don't do it that way, you burn in a lake of fire. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, is this your message, bro? Like, this is terrible. Like, this is not good, man. Like, give me a break. Holy moly, right? And, but fortunately, uh, <laughs> there, is, there is an answer in the Bible that I didn't have back then. Now, now I'm, you know, better equipped, right? Um, but we know right? If we wonder, you know, how do, I, how do I get saved? How do I get into heaven? <clears throat> Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And so listen, I know that this may not, you may be in here and it may not make sense to you. It didn't make sense to me. I didn't understand a lot. There's a lot of things I didn't understand in the beginning. There's a lot of things I still don't understand that I, every day I'm texting one of my mentors, what does this mean, right? Who's the sons of perdition, right? What's this about, right? But I will tell you, me moving forward in faith, and I used to think I knew what faith meant, that word. Faith is not a mindset. I used to think that, you know, oh, I got faith. I got faith. I used to think that faith was a mindset. Faith is not a mindset. Faith is a way of being. 
Faith is you taking a step when you don't know what it looks like. That's faith. And some of you have had faith, right? You left, maybe you left a job before it made sense. Maybe you joined a company when it didn't make sense. Maybe you whatever, right? Maybe you went and talked to someone when it didn't make sense. Maybe you forgave someone when it didn't make sense, right? So faith is a way of being, and so is fear. Right? Faith, fear. So fear is, I think this is the best I can do. This is the best, best I got. I may not like it, it's not perfect, best I can do. <clears throat> Solomon said, the hand of the diligent will rule, the lazy will be put to forced labor. And you hear that and you're like, oh, hmm. There's a lot of people in forced labor right now. What does that mean? Two things. One, they're in a career they don't like, but they won't leave because they're in fear. That's forced labor. I can't leave this thing because I got to pay my bills, right? They're in fear. They're in forced labor. And those that are still working for their salvation. You can't earn it. It's grace. It's not how many donations you do. Now, when you're saved, that's called justified. And when you walk in sanctification, you want to do those things. That's different. You're not doing it for that thing. You're doing it because you want to do that thing. It's kind of like my wife and, and me in the dishes. She doesn't want to have to ask me. To, never mind. She wants me to want to do that. <laughs> I honestly, I do the dishes because I hate the way she stacks the dishwasher. Anyone else? I can't take it. I look at it and it's like, what happened? She's like, I'm like, what is going on? Anyway, anyway. And so I, I'd, like to, I'd like to pray. And again, I just want to acknowledge that this may not make sense to you. It really, it really didn't for me. I didn't understand it. I understand the sin, the crucifixion. Right? What's happening here? I, I didn't understand it. Okay? But I felt in my heart that it, was, it made sense. And I chose to step into faith. If you're tired of being your own Savior, and you're ready to accept Jesus into your life, I would encourage you to, to say this out loud, and I'll, I'll say it, let you, let you repeat it. And no judgment. Listen, no judgment. We're called not to judge. right? There's absolutely no judgment. I'm just so honored that you, would, that you would be here. You would come here. Come check it out. So we'll pray. Father, you can repeat after me if you want. Father, anyone? I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I know you raised him from the dead to atone for my sins. I know that as with grace, not works, that I am saved. And I am so thankful for you, Lord. I ask that you fill me with the Holy Spirit so I can have your helper with me at all times and can start to move with supernatural speed to bring more glory to your kingdom. Father, I receive the Holy Spirit today and I thank you for listening to me and hearing my plea. The world needs more spirit-filled followers and I thank you for this gift. I want to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And so, <clears throat> so if you, if you, if that was your first time saying that sort of thing, and if you would like, I would love for you to come up here and 
and for us to welcome you and for us to love on you, for us to hug you, if you would like. If that's uncomfortable, I totally understand. <clears throat> and if you would like a prayer, come on up here and someone's going to help you out. All right. And so I just, I just appreciate you and um, thank you for listening. And um, anyone would like to come up here? I'd love to see you up here. Yeah, thank you. So awesome. So congrats on making it to the end of the video. I hope you got massive value from this. Feel free to subscribe. And I would highly suggest that you click that little bell bing, so that you're notified as we upload new and free content. Feel free to share this with someone that you think could benefit from it. And just know that we really, really appreciate you. Feel free to check out the description for any kind of links or additional notes. And I hope to see you in the next video.